Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Unfiltered. Thank you for tuning in. Pastor David, thank you for joining us as always. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, we recently had a meeting right before we came on on camera here, and, and you mentioned something out of Acts chapter 11 that kind of piqued, piqued my interest in. You know, uh, Peter had to do something very difficult going against tradition of religion and everything that he was taught, according not to the Mosaic laws you just shared, but to a, a law that was probably more Pharisaic. Uh, when he went to Cornelius's house, or he went to Simon the Tanner's house and ate with him, uh, some of those of the circumcision came and contended with him because he ate in an uncircumcised person's house. With Cornelius. With Cornelius. And, you know, today we see that uh, there are some that, well, if you do ministry with this group of people or do ministry with that group of people, you can't do it because they're not of the quote-unquote circumcision. I want to use that just for example. How dangerous can that be and how can we put God in a box doing some stuff like that. I was mentioning on Sunday, and I'll be reiterating this on uh, this upcoming Sunday, that, um, you know, it's interesting how Jesus, when he had been resurrected, had given the command to go out into the whole world and preach the gospel. So he already had let them know that it was the world they were to reach, and yet at the same time, it appears that the the Jewish apostles had yet to understand that God's love embraced all, not just the Jew, but also Jew and Gentile. In reality, you know, there were no such things in terms of, from a biblical worldview, of, uh, we'll say, um, we'll say uh, Italians yeah. or you know, Mexicans for that matter, or Germans or whatever, you know, just kind of giving a, a, a wide approach to that. Uh, there was Jew and Gentile. And so either you were Jewish or you were Gentile, you were, you were one or the other, right? So the Jews had established their, um, their, uh, their rights and in, in their religion and all. And so they, um, they were not evangelistic in the sense that we as Christians are. They had the temple so people would come to temple, mm -hmm. you know, so they were mandatory uh, festivals that they were to uh, observe three times a year, every male 20 years and above. So they would go to temple, they would go to the temple, but they were not necessarily going out from the temple, evangelizing the world to become Jewish. It was more like the people with curiosity who would encounter the Jews, it had become that way. So you have in scripture, you have uh, Roman occupiers who are centurions, you see them in the New Testament, in the Gospels as well as the Book of Acts. And, and these are people that um, occupied as foreign oppressors. And some of them had become aware of the Jewish faith and they became what are called God-fearers. They were never fully indoctrinated into the Jewish religious system. They, they held to many of their, uh, their laws, but they would not be fully circumcised and thus they never became a Jew through conversion, they were a God-fearer. They held to the moral absolutes and traditions and all of that to a certain degree. And so you see that with centurions. You know, there was a centurion at the foot of the cross that that saw Jesus and, and as a centurion, he said, surely this was a good man. Mm -hmm. This was the man of God. You see him in a good light. Well, you end up with uh, a centurion by the name of uh, Cornelius in the New Testament. And so... God is doing a work because in Acts 1, <clears throat> excuse me, in Acts chapter 1, you have Jesus giving the promise of the Spirit and saying, you'll be witnesses to me to the entire world. Then you see it starting to expand in terms of the day of Pentecost arrives and the Holy Spirit baptizes, the church uh, becomes uh, born, uh, the 120 in the upper room. You see them outreaching in Jerusalem. They begin to move into other areas in Judea. Ultimately, they go into Samaria, and then the Samaritans receive the word of God, and Peter and John go and pray for them that they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you see it expanding when an Ethiopian mm -hmm. eunuch is returning from, from Jerusalem as he was there for worship, and yet he's brought to faith in Christ. And though he's undoubtedly an Ethiopian convert to Judaism, 
because he had come to worship. It's not stated that he's a, a uh, God-fearer. He goes back, and so ultimately you end up with, with uh, Peter going into Samaria, and uh, as well as Philip, and then you encounter Cornelius. And so in a nutshell, what happens is the, uh, the people who at one time uh, were called to go to temple are now the temple of the Holy Spirit who are called to go out to people. And so that was quite a difference because when Peter um, perceived that God was not a respecter of persons, he says, and preaches the gospel because people had assembled to hear all that God had commanded him to say, which I was sharing on Sunday, that's what the church ought to be doing every Sunday, every time we gather, is to hear what God has to say and then to do it. Well, that's what happened with them, and that's how they got saved. Is even though they, while Peter was preaching, they got saved. Well, that calls the uh, the those of the circumcision to begin to question because all the way from the north where they were at, word has already been trickling down to the south, and they now hear that the Gentiles have received God's word, mm -hmm. and they're upset because he was eating with the with the uh, Gentiles and all. And so you see how God is teaching the church to be open to people to reach the world with the gospel because even the centurions who are outside, even the Romans who are outside of the promise of God, even the Gentiles uh, were outside of the, the, the promises of God could be brought in through Amen. the gospel. Amen. And so we're so thankful for the gospel that is powerful and alive. Amen. Uh, thank you for that, Pastor. I want to remind you that we have our services at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. You're taking us through Romans chapter 13. 13. And uh, after that, we're going to be celebrating communion as a church family. So I want to invite you guys to come out, invite your friends and family to come join us. We'll have a great time worshiping the Lord, spending time in Bible in the Bible, Bible study, and then celebrating communion. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in, and God bless you.